Hello Internet, my name is Quinn and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills, a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. This is episode 20, Measurements, part 2. Let's dive in. Okay, on the previous measurements episode, we talked about these guys here, your caliper and your micrometer, and we gave a little love to the humble machinist scale. So now let's talk about the more obtuse measuring instruments. So for precision exterior dimensions, we use the micrometer. Now what about precision interior dimensions? For that, we typically use the much less flashy looking snap gauge. These guys go by other names. People also call them telescoping gauges or bore gauges sometimes. Uh, I call them snap gauges, and you'll see why here in a moment. Now, you might be wondering how on earth does this guy measure a precision interior dimension? Let's find out. Snap gauges probably require the most skill of all the tools that we've looked at, so I'm going to demo it on this bearing. And uh, bearings and drill rod are a great way to practice using measuring tools because they are ground to very precise dimensions, and you know what that dimension is from the packaging. You can know if you are, are using the tool correctly to measure it. Now the internal bore on this bearing is 5 eighths or 625 thou, so I'm going to use my half inch to three quarter inch snap gauge. The way these guys work is there are these curved anvils on both sides and one or both of them will be spring loaded. Sometimes one is rigid and the other spring loaded and these guys they're both spring loaded. And then there will be a little thumb screw down here which tightens these guys. Now there are different techniques for using these guys but I'm going to show you the way I do it and uh, I've got the part suspended here in a vise because you're typically going to be doing this in the lathe or in some other fixture but uh, it, is, it is very helpful to have the part that you're measuring well supported while you do this because you kind of need two hands. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse the anvils and then I'm going to tighten the thumb screw and those anvils are going to stay collapsed. And then I'm going to insert this guy in here like so, and I'm going to get myself sort of visually aligned on the vertical center line of the bore. And then I'm going to tilt this guy up a little bit so that the handle is above horizontal. And then I'm going to try to hold the center here kind of roughly in the middle of the bore. And then I'm going to loosen the thumb screw. And that's here, that snap. That's why we call them snap gauges. And now, I'm going to snug up the thumb screw again. Now where we are is the anvils are expanded against that bore, but the handle of the snap gauge is above center. So we're reading a measurement that is too high because we've got an angle on our anvils in there. So now what I'm going to do is just tip this guy forward down through center until it falls out. Now let's talk about what happened when we did that. When these anvils were in there at an angle, they were reading something that was larger than the actual bore, right? Because they weren't square to the surfaces. And then as we tipped it forward, the anvils became more and more compressed because the distance was becoming shorter as we became aligned with the surfaces in there. And this thumb screw here tightens the anvils but still, still allows them to compress and then they stay wherever they were compressed to. And then as we go over center, now the distance is getting larger again, and so the anvils just stay compressed where they were. And so what happens is by rocking it through center with the thumb screw tight, we're effectively compressing the anvils to whatever the shortest dimension in there is, which is gonna be when it's perfectly vertical. And that's gonna be the diameter of our bore. And then I'm gonna come in here with my micrometer and measure that distance across the anvils. Just like that, there's our 625. And again, this is a very precision ground bore. It's the inside of a bearing, so we can trust that uh, if we get exactly 625, then we can feel good that our technique was correct. Now the gotcha with snap gauges is that you have to have your feel really dialed in with micrometers because uh, if you just keep going past where the actual measurement is, the micrometer will just compress those spring-loaded anvils. And uh, it's very easy to get a measurement that's smaller than the actual bore. Now, in my experience, the ratchet thumb wheels on micrometers are no help here because the torque level that they are set to is higher than what will compress the anvils on a snap gauge. So uh, you really have to do it the old fashioned way and dial in your feel with the barrel. So particularly when you're learning or frankly anytime a measurement is really critical, especially with snap gauges, a good thing to do is just do the measurement multiple times 
And uh, you know, if you do this measurement, say three times, and you get the same reading every time, then you can trust that reading. If you're getting crazy variations, you're doing something wrong. If you get the same reading twice, maybe do it another time to make sure you get the reading, the same reading three times, then you can probably trust that. And you'll need to do less and less of that as your skill with these guys increases, but uh, it does take some practice. Now, if you have more money than patience, there are alternatives to snap gauges. You can get inside micrometers that have special anvils on them for measuring inside bores. There are also uh, special types of dial indicators that have a special instrument on the end for measuring the diameter of a bore. So know that those alternatives exist, but they are quite expensive and, uh, you know, snap gauges are actually kind of fun. I think it's worth your time to learn to use them. And finally, let's talk about depth, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. What, what am I doing? So much like exterior dimensions and interior dimensions, depth also has its own category of specialty tools for measuring when the caliper is not good enough. Now this is called a depth micrometer or a depth gauge or like everything else in machining, people argue about what to call it, but uh, I'm gonna call it a depth micrometer or depth mic. Now this guy has basically the same mechanism on it as the outside diameter micrometers do. And down here in the base, it has a very high precision anvil, just like the micrometers do. And like the other micrometers, this only measures a range of one inch. So when you have a hole that's deeper than that, you need to get the approximate depth of your hole by using one of the larger anvils that come in the kit. And so these guys give you your coarse depth value and then you dial in that last inch on here. And much like the micrometers, you have to add the extra length of the anvil to whatever reading you get here. But uh, once again, we'll show just the zero to one anvil because that's the easiest to understand. So at first blush, this looks very much like the traditional style of micrometer and you might think it works the same way. It's got the markings here that you'll recognize. And once again, these are in hundreds of thousands. So this is 900 thou, 800 thou, 700 thou. And the markings between here are 25 thou again. And one trip around the barrel is again, 25 thousandths. There's the ratcheting thumb wheel back here. The anvil sticks out the bottom. And then on the back side, we have a lock for holding that measurement, just like on the other types of micrometers. But there's something weird here. Do you see it? Yeah, the numbers go in the opposite direction from the traditional micrometer on the body. And this is what will mess you up on a depth micrometer. So let's take a reading on the depth of this bore so you can see how this works. So there's a precision surface on the bottom here, and you want a machine surface upon which to rest that on your part. And then you want to hold that square using the base like so. And then we can start cranking this guy down, but watch what's happening on the barrel. You see, as we go down, the numbers get covered up, starting with the smaller ones. So when we get to our final measurement right there, we read this the same way as on a traditional micrometer in that we add the largest value, the hundreds, and then the ticks, each of which are 25, and then we add the thousandths from the barrel. However, that largest value, the one we want, is actually covered up. So you might look at this casually and think, oh, we're at 600 plus, you know, one, two, three ticks, and then add the barrel. But actually this is 500 because the 500 is up there and it's hidden by the barrel. So this is what'll really get you if you're not paying attention with a depth mic is that the, uh, the largest value, the one that you want to start your arithmetic to add up your measurement is actually the one that's usually underneath the barrel. So you have to remember that you're counting down from up here. So the deeper you go, the more of the scale that you're actually covering up. And uh, so this scale is in reverse for that reason. And uh, yeah, you have to remember that whatever number you can see, you probably have to go one number smaller than that and then use that. And then again, with the small ticks, the small ticks that we want are, are the ones that are covered up. So you gotta look at how many small ticks are remaining to know how many are covered up. And then you can start looking at your barrel. So. Uh, you got to be paying attention when you use the depth mic. Now, when you're practicing and learning to use this guy, uh, a great thing to do is to use the pigtail on the caliper to give you an approximate depth. And that will tell you if you're sort of vaguely in the ballpark, because if you, uh, if you make a mistake and you read the scale in the wrong direction, your measurement will be quite a bit off. And so you'll, you can sanity check it with the caliper. But uh, this is another situation where you want to take the measurement multiple times and uh, make sure that you're doing your arithmetic right each time. And that is all the basic types of measurements that you'll need to do in the home machine shop. Links to all these tools are down in the description below. I hope you found this overview useful. Go ahead and uh, hit me up on Patreon if you're enjoying these videos. All right, thanks very much. We'll see you next time.